Dr. Kevin Lawrence, this is part six of Persecuted IJ, my docu-series about my arrest and persecution at Port Harcourt Prison in 2017. It's taken me seven years to be able to tell the story. And I know some of you are getting emotional already. I went through a lot of trauma. I'm not a strong person. I hear that and I'm strong, I'm strong. I'm not, I'm really broken. I had to leave Nigeria. I've never disclosed where I am. I moved out of Nigeria and then I moved to another continent twice now and in fact three times and I'm trying to find my peace. I wanted to come back to journalism but I needed a hundred million at least to run a proper media house but I did a fundraiser last week and it was not successful. I mean not everybody's VDM and not everybody's liked so all that is shelved away for now. I can't do any investigations. I can't do anything. I got lots of stuff on my neck but the the Ibiomi case started like this. I got a news tip. That news tip said the pastor of Salvation Ministry, their church, was given a vehicle that belongs to the church, that was donated to the church, to Iabo Ju, that Iabo seems to use Juju and their pastor to get money out of the church to take the vehicle that's supposed to transport people. This person had an elaborate eight page letter. So what is the point of this letter? I asked the person, this was Instagram DM. They want to get their vehicle back. And they literally wanted to shame me about because they claim that she used to do in the past that she gets money of the church. She, you know, there was just so much ranting. And I said, I don't like to get involved in any relationship matters. If you want your car back, I can try and investigate send me the car papers. So I took that eight page letter and I pasted page one on my blog. And I said, church member allegedly says, Yabu is picking up church property via their pastor, where I mentioned Yabu's name and the pastor. And I said, allegedly, these are allegations. If you know anything about it, let us know. So I contacted Yabo via email. I didn't know Yabo before that. I just contacted her via DM and I told her to respond. She read the thing, she didn't respond. Meanwhile, I got a call from one of the Biomi's pastor and somebody said they were representing the Biomi and they wanted me to take that story down. I said, why? The last thing you want to tell a journalist is to take a story down. Then you're hiding something. I said, what I wrote there is an allegation, and I'm going to investigate it. It has to do with a car, you know. And the lawyer kept insisting that I take it down or else he'll sue, he'll sue. I actually wanted them to sue me, but I did not know that this was not even a civil case. This is how I found out that Nigeria has a criminal defamation law, not a civil defamation. Defamation is civil. I came from the U.S., so I'm assuming that it was civil and I was not going to budge. I don't take stories down. The only person that takes story down in this Nigeria is Linda Ikeji and it's blackmail. She does 750,000 was, was her price then in 2016, 2017. You have to pay Linda 750k to take his story down. And that's blackmail. You know, we don't do that in journalism. We have ethics. So this BME lawyer was telling me, to, I said, I can't take anything down until I finish investigating. I went back to the DM to contact the writer, and the writer says she's going to get all the whatever. It was a female name, Patience ABA, a typical Potakot name. We'll get the paper to the whatever. Two days later, BME's lawyers took action. And according to the IPO, they paid the IGP one billion naira to arrest me. Two days after I spoke to be Ms. Lawyer, my house was surrounded, and that was how it all unfolded. I've told that story in chapter one, two, and three. So that was the whole case. So now, Yabuju had to come and make a statement to the police on her role, as in, she said, I don't know Ibiomi. Ibiomi said he doesn't know Yabo. They both wrote statements. Those statements were in the court file. You know, unfortunately, that entire court file is no longer in Potakot Courthouse. It's inside my room right here. I'll tell you how that got to my hands. But at the end of the day, Iabo wrote something in hers that said she's used to people writing lies about her and defaming her, but it doesn't bother her. 
She talked about how she went to Port Harcourt at one time for a program that had to do with AGN or Tampan or one of those, and she took her daughter Priscilla with her. Other than that, I've never been to Port Harcourt after that. She spoke, she wrote her thing. All that will come out during this Dr. series. Anyway, my own thing was, if a journalist uses non-affirmative words, like reportedly, allegations, allegedly, you can't arrest them. They're protected by that. Unfortunately, the IPOs arrested me. You know, this was the basis of how they threw the case out of, case out of court because the Associated Press wrote a letter on the AP style book. It became an international case where CPJ got involved, committed to protect journalists in New York. They got involved. And the AP style book was presented in court to the judge. And the judge said, Yabo Joe is never in court. Every time I came to court and she was not in court, they took me back to the prison. You know what it takes to go to a prison? You wake up 6 in the morning, you get ready, you leave at 7.30, you get to the court. When you get to the court, there's 20 cases ahead of you. EFCC cases are long. They'll be doing their trials. Your case number 26, and your case gets called at 3 o'clock. Imagine sitting in a courtroom since 8 a.m. to 3 o'clock. They now call you. When they now call you, they call you, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, it's not there. They just adjourned. I was adjourned seven to nine times because of Yabo Joe. Little did I know that Yabo was getting paid not to come to court by that late billionaire. Well, let me tell you something. I didn't know that until Mubad died and we got into the Mubad thing. She was bragging, I'll send you right back to your cell again. It was that bragging that a police officer heard a police officer that was one of Kennedy's detail, the one that was sent money to go send alerts to Yabo. That was the police officer that contacted me and said, this stupid woman, look at her bragging. I was paying her, but that's how I found out. So imagine if I had written a book about my prison and then that 2019 apology Yabo made to me about everything that happened. Imagine she has apologized and she comes up and she starts bashing me because of Mubad's wife. I said nobody must do it for Mubad's wife, that she's a black widow. So Instablog now carries the story and said, Yabo Ojo and Kemi Olunlo just opened old wounds. Was that supposed to be wounds that should be? Someone has already apologized and everything, but there was something God was doing. God did not want me to write that prison book because if I had written it, I would have said, oh, Yabo apologized, everything, ended it there. Not knowing that Yabo was actually paid $10 million total to send me back to prison each time. Your enemies are around you, but you have to decipher them. So you have to ask God, God, show me my enemies. Say that again. God, show me my enemies. That's how Yabo would have gotten away with it and I would never have known. They're around you. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, each time she didn't come to court, the prosecutor would say this line. Listen carefully. Yeah, but you could not be in court today, my lord. She's filming in Australia. Every time Yabo was filming in Australia, Yabo has not made a film in years. As of that time, she wasn't in film. She was in entrepreneurship, okay? She was selling things, doing her Amala restaurant, doing her karaoke stuff. She was not making movies at that time, doing TikToks and everything. Yabo has never been to Australia, but yet they covered for her. She's filming in Australia. After I came out of prison, I wrote the Australian authorities to look at the database for her name, not found. They said I should send fingerprints. I said I have no way to send fingerprints, but she's never, that's if she came in on another name. She's never been to Australia and they were lying throughout. And that's how they sent me by the court. So for Yabo to have taken money, to keep me behind bars, my son and myself, we will not forgive you. And you had already apologized, but you were doing all that. This is why her nemesis calls her a snake. And the name for snake is Sepeteri. Okay, Sepeteri that Liz Anjorin calls her. You see, she's a really big snake. These are people you have to really be careful of. Let's continue on part seven.